The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 686 A Quick Interrogation Jaxie followed Valet and Shinespark into the cargo bay, eyes darting perceptively around the ship's interior, with Yesna at his tail. In the bay itself, Yanavan sat tied against one wall, Niala perched in a dutiful vigil, keeping him illuminated and unable to sneak. Well, here's the dude, Valet announced, sweeping a wing at Yanavan's half of the room. No one else but him here, she added, hoping Niala would avoid drawing undue attention to herself. Everyone who could kind of came up on deck. Well, well, what have we here? Jaxi rubbed his chin, scrutinizing the captive Cerusian. A tight lock they put you in, my good imposter. One could almost believe they think you're the real Yenevan. Yenevan glowered, but held his silence. He's a real thing, Valet said with a shrug. And if he's not, he's done a pretty good job pretending. Jaxi patted her on the head, earning a hiss. Easy now, assistant. Unless our captive friends wants to weigh in, I'm about to draw some unflattering conclusions. Eh, excuse me, what? Valet slipped away, spitting and landing several hoofsteps from him. What did you call me? I complimented your intellect. Jaxie grinned at the ground. Unfortunately, you also are foreigners, and I suspect this stallion has preyed upon an uncultured knowledge of our history and mythos. Tell me, did he antagonize you before you humiliatingly bound him so? Shinesburg cleared her throat. Somewhat. We suspect there was dream magic involved. Mostly he makes threats and insults, Valet added with a burp. Mm-hmm, <laughs> And you're aware of your fate if I take you seriously, Fraud? Jaxie spread his shoulders and laughed. History's charlatans and criminals aren't the models we want our ponies impersonating. Come, speak. Show us your best attempt at exoneration. All of your fools, Yenemans sighed, shaking his head as much as his bindings allowed. Blustering, pompous, indecent fools who don't understand the powers you trifle with. Take me before your council and see how satisfied you are with your victory then. <laughs> really? Jaxie wiped a tear from his eye, shaking from laughter. I offend you? You're righteous in your convictions? <laughs> this stallion's a gem. Yes, now ask the merchants wherever they found him. Yesna raised an eyebrow at Shinespark and Valet, clearly hoping she didn't need to ask. Several days southeast along the coast, Shinespark answered, in a sea cave. Jaxie, is there a meaning to this? Yes, I know what I'm doing, Jaxie assured. How likely is our imposter to say anything more illuminating? Or am I wasting my time hearing him out? Uh, Valet scratched her head. He's kind of been like this the whole everyone, Jaxie interrupted, giving Valet an arrogant look. Only someone a full head taller than her could manage. I've come to the conclusion this buffoon has nothing more worth my time. Let us return to my other new assistants on the deck and discuss my findings. He turned with a swirl of wings, sweeping a flap of his armor behind him and striding slowly away. Ah, Vli blinked between him, Yesna, and a sullen Yenavan. Okay. The moment the door closed behind them, Valet rounded on Jaxie. Okay, what was that about? She demanded, stomping a hoof. I get having an ego, but you were being a jerk to everyone. Don't mock me. I was staying in character, Jaxie said, stepping past her until he was standing in the center of everyone. It wouldn't have been nearly as solid a ruse had I let you in on it so you could play along. What? Uh, Valet tilted her head, jaw hanging, all of her friends' gazes concerned at the current conversation. Elementary, Jaxie began, starting to pace. I wear my station on my breastplate for any Mistphalian to see. He knew who I was. All I had to do was introduce sufficient manufactured strife between us, and any coward would have jumped at the opportunity to turn us against one another. Furthermore, any innocent would instantly recognize someone as unhinged as I was, wouldn't think twice about holding them before the council for sticking to the story. Audacity is no refuge against me. So, my dear Valet, unless you see a flaw in my logic, I've firmly deduced this imposter of yours is neither innocent nor a coward. He truly believes himself to be something special, which makes me all the more curious what his deal is. Valet blinked. Oh, bananas, I guess that makes sense then. Look, when you've met one too many guys who are actually insane, that's quite fine, Jack assured. 
I just didn't want us getting too buddy-buddy before I saw whether your prisoner was looking for a way out. From the crowd, Amber loudly cleared her throat. So what makes you think Yenavan is an imposter? Jaxie nodded, giving her his attention. Not that I blame you for any ignorance, being from continents away, but Monk Lord Yerevan ceased being Equin on the day of his treachery. This is no mere myth. The timing of his betrayal was such that it was witnessed by many. Not only do some of his contemporaries survive and retain their offices to this day, but he was in the presence of clerics and acolytes as well, many of whom saw his monstrous distorted form in person. The other lords have spoken of it as permanent punishment for his betrayal, a new and twisted body. However, not only was your captive whole in body, if not mind, he was also a far sight from the eighty-odd years of age the real Yenavan would have on his back by now. You mean his nightmare module form? Maple spoke up. That, she glanced around, might be something we should tell the council about, but we do know about it, and that's how we're sure it's him. Jaxie glanced around, and everyone slowly murmured in confirmation. Well, this is interesting. Yes, now, share with me your intellect. The stoic mayor at his side took a step forward. If you're convinced the council should take an interest in him, which I agree with, there's no reason to debate him here. Matters of importance can fall to them to determine. Valet gave her a sigh of relief. Yes! Seriously, I wouldn't care if you grilled him and he turned out to be a fake. I just want him to be someone else's problem. Though I am pretty sure we've got the real thing, so just be ready. Few caution will be exercised, Jaxie promised early. In the meantime, let's see about getting you into port. I hope you're not overly averse to publicity. Scheisbach frowned. That depends. Why? Aha! A fair question. Jaxie strolled to the railing, looking out at the luminescent mountaintop city. Navigator, correct course five degrees to the right. You see, these reaches of Mistvale prospered greatly from the airship revolution and enjoyed the brief flourishing that came with them. We even took steps toward joining a global economy with the world's other great powers. But most of our proposed exports were heavy and required large volumes to be valuable, so we were the first to be hemorrhaged when Varsidel needed ships where there were instead. First trade slowed, and then a connected future was gone before it even began to happen. So you'll be the first foreigners our capital has seen in quite a while. Maple shook her head, staring too, as the city came into better relief. It sounds almost like Riverfall. This is going to be an interesting place. End of chapter 686